In my attitude, I, I, I'm asked frequently, if you look back at my tenure as chief prosecutor for almost two years, I was the leading advocate for Guantanamo and for the military commissions. Uh, you know, I wrote an op-ed in the New York Times, did a journal article uh, for the Yale uh, Law Journal. I was on Fox and Friends. You know, I was the person out there advocating for Guantanamo and for the military commissions. I'm asked frequently, well, you know, you did that, but then you became one of the leading critics of Guantanamo, so which one's the truth? And I think they both are. I mean, like I said, I believed we were committed to doing this right uh, when I came into the job, and we certainly made that effort um, for a significant portion of the time that I was there. And it was that change in mindset of the people above me that uh, it's when I began to question whether we were really committed to having full, fair, and open trials. And it became apparent in October of 2007, in my mind, that we weren't, and that was when I resigned. Looking back at those early days, I had people like General Altenberg and General Hemingway and Stu Couch and people that I believed were really focused on trying to do this right. So in spite of um, what you had political appointees trying, in my view, trying to steer the process in the wrong direction. I think you had a, a number of career military attorneys that uh, were trying to resist that as best they could and steer it in the right direction. In 2006, when I, I met with uh, Senator Graham and Senator McCain, they'd asked, you know, what do you need to get the job done right? And one of the things that uh, I asked for, and they had me draft the language for, and it's included in the Military Commissions Act, was a provision that said uh, the prosecution and defense can exercise their professional legal judgment without undue influence or coercion, which is different language than what appears in the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is solely focused on external pressure on a defense attorney. So now my, you know, the two steps in the chain of command above me are the guy that says, the president says we don't torture, and the person above him is the guy that wrote the torture memo. So that was when I left that meeting. I went back to my office in Crystal City and uh, drafted an email to uh, Deputy Secretary England asking for immediate reassignment. 